This video is part of a project for the Element 14 community, the electronics and engineering community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com, link in the doobly-doo. Firebrick 5, Picasso Blue, Viridian Light. These are all very specific colors defined by very specific wavelengths of light, or more accurately, by very specific ratios of three different specific wavelengths of light, red, blue, and green. By varying the ratio of these three colors, we can create pretty much any color in the visible spectrum. But how do we tell all the millions of possible colors apart? We have definitive names for a few of them, sure, but when does one person's interpretation of pumice end and blue fern begin? What we need is some sort of universal language for defining colors. One that doesn't leave any colors up to ambiguous interpretation. One that every modern device could conceivably understand and replicate. What we need are hex codes. <laughs> Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and if you like learning about technology while building goofy projects around the shop, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel. For now, tally-ho! Before we start talking about replicating colors, we should probably talk about how colors on a modern display are created. Most modern screens are made up of tiny picture elements, or pixels, which are actually made up of three color elements, or subpixels, that are each individually addressable. Note that this is not the case when it comes to CRT displays. They employ an entirely different technology that we won't be exploring in this video. If you want to learn about how CRT images are formed, Technology Connections has a fantastic piece about it up here. Anyway, pixels are each made up of three subpixels, one for each of the primary colors of light. By changing the intensity of each color's respective subpixel, we can change the color of the pixel as it's observed by the human eye. From red, to blue, to green, or somewhere in between. Of course, if we turn everything up to full intensity, we'll get white. Take everything down and we'll get black. This is known as additive color. By adding more of a component color, we can change the hue toward that component color. Yes, this is a very rudimentary explanation of how additive color works, and I'm purposely not going into too much depth because a discussion on color theory is really way outside the scope of this video. If you are interested in that topic, leave me a note down in the doobly-doo and I'll see what I can do. For now though, I just wanted to provide a little bit of context to facilitate the topic at hand. Now, that brings me to the next point in this discussion. When we describe the capacity of a display to reproduce color information, we're using a concept known as color depth. Color depth, or bit depth, is the number of bits used to indicate the color of a single pixel. As of 2018, nearly every display being manufactured is capable of displaying what's known as true color, or 24-bit color. This means that every color the display is capable of reproducing can be defined by 24 bits, or 3 bytes, of information. Are you still with me? Because this is where it all comes together. Remember in the last video where we talked about how hexadecimal numbers work and why we use them in computing? If you missed it, you can uh, watch the video by clicking the thing up here in the corner. Anyway, hexadecimal numbers work really well for computers because each digit holds four bits of information. And if we put two hexadecimal digits together, we have a complete byte of information. And that brings me back to these so-called hex codes for colors. You may have noticed that hex codes are always six digits long, and not coincidentally, six digits in hexadecimal is three bytes, or 24 bits of information. So what do these codes actually mean? Well, let's go back to 24-bit color. We know that with 24-bit color, we have three bytes of color information. We also know that there are three primary colors of light, represented by three subpixels in each pixel of the display. Are you starting to see the connection? Now, you may, at some point, have seen a color indicated by an RGB value, a set of three numbers in parentheses. What this is is a mathematical array that contains the respective intensities of the red, blue, and green subpixels. Each color's intensity is represented by a decimal number between 0 and 255. Why 255? Well, because it's the largest decimal number that can be represented by 8 bits. 
that RGB value is actually a 24-bit number that's written in this really extremely clunky notation. But in engineering, we're always looking for a way to make things more efficient, aren't we? As such, we can fairly easily convert these three decimal numbers into three hexadecimal couplets and save ourselves lots of typing down the road. So in a hex code, each subpixel's color is represented by a hexadecimal couplet. The first two digits are red, the next are green, and the last two are blue. By manipulating each couplet from double zero, or zero intensity, up to double F, which is full intensity, we can instruct a display to reproduce any of the 16,777,216 possible 24-bit colors. Fun fact, our squishy human eyes can only distinguish about 10 million different colors, so modern displays will actually reproduce more colors than we could possibly perceive. But those colors aren't always evenly distributed across our perception space, so some people will notice a phenomenon known as color banding at the transition between two adjacent colors. Light perception is weird, man! Now that, in a nutshell, is how hexadecimal codes work. Over the next several videos, I'll be putting this information together with some electronics to build a rather interesting gadget, so be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out. Connect with me on the social media and get sneak peeks of projects in progress. Links are down in the doobly-doo. Up here is a video that YouTube thinks you will probably enjoy, and the show notes for this episode are somewhere right around here. My name is Atari, and until next time, remember, it's okay. It's just a prototype. Tally-ho, y'all.